I said the formula of this slide very important because we will have several questions. So from homework on number two, yeah, I haven't given it to you, I will post it soon. I will post the soon for the due date after Thanksgiving break. Okay? The due date will be after Thanksgiving break. So you will have several questions on this slide. Alright? Got it? Alright, so here, I will not repeat. So let me just uh, continue from this slide. We already finished this one. We finished the derivation of the site. Then, the next topic, E.2, building cost of a heap. With the formulas from the previous slide, now we are ready to calculate the building cost of a heap. Given an array, we need to build a max here. How many operations? Comparison, basically comparison, and you know some other operations. Copy data using assignment operation. But we just use comparison as the basic operation. And do the combine. Combine the cost of all heights. When we build heap, when we build heap, last time I ran an example building a heap. If you remember, bottom up, remember the triangle. I move the triangle bottom up. Alright? Follow some order from right to left, bottom up. That's the building process. Now we need to estimate the total cost of that building. Process. Cost of max simplified for all nodes of height h. Here, let us fix height h. We want to calculate, or we want to estimate. If we run max simplified operation from that location, no, it has a location. We start from there and all the way down to the leaf. The very bottom, the leaf level. All the way down. Okay. Estimate that cost. Then we accumulate all such total costs. That's the building cost. All right. Let's look at it. Single node. Here, what is this? What is this? All right. So here, let me use a diagram. Let me use a simple diagram to show you. Now here, the root here, right? Root here. Then we have many levels. That should be enough. Okay? That should be enough. <coughs> then, to calculate the height of this node, look at that. What is the height of this node? Height of this node, when you calculate, you count the number of edges through the longest path. To the leaf. Not this one. Do not count number of edge to this one. This is shorter path to the leaf. Okay? Using the longest path from current node to one of the leaves. That one we will use it. You do the calculation. And I count the number of edges 
here there are two edges. One, two, two edges. So this slope is height is h plus sorry, height equals two. Not a one, not a one, not use this one. This one we will get a one. It's not a long list. We want to calculate a long list path. Right? Yeah. So here, suppose there is one node with height h. So you know, you, you connect to one of the leaves from the longest path to the bottom through h edges, right? h edges. Yeah, this number gives you the number of edges, right? When you run the max pp operation, you need to fix starting from this point all the way down to one of the leaves, right? Here we use the longest path to do the estimate because we want to cover the worst case. Longest path, we get the worst case. All right. So here the cost is constant multiple of h, right? Constant c multiple of h. Because each local triangle, the number of operations you need constant. Constant. It's a constant. Okay. But you need to do h times all the way down h times. So c times h. So this big O of h, that's the meaning corresponding to c times h here. Okay, all right. Then, how many nodes in the heap with height h? Remember the formula? How many nodes in the height, uh, sorry, in the heap with height h? Remember the formula? Okay, yeah, formula. Raw function n over two to the h minus flow function n over two to the h plus one. This is from the formula we derived the last time. This formula is exact. Precise, exact, no approximation. But here, if we use this formula, although it is, yeah, actually using this formula is quite good. Uh, then we will see using this formula. This formula. Using this formula actually is quite good. But here, this formula, this is an estimate, estimate formula, less than or equal to that series function of n over 2 to the h plus 1. Yeah, but later, when we accumulate all the costs out with that exact formula, it will, it will be easy. But we will see. All right, but here. And summarize where we are. So here, where we are. All right, heights from we can go from one through four function of log of this two of n. Log of this two of n. This height responds to the root. Law function, not sleeping function. Law function. Not this to not it. Because we have a height of zero, leaves. The bottom level corresponds to leaves. So we come from zero. Here, for, although here we, we run from one to this number, but there is a zero level, we do not come. 
the zero level, we do not need to run the max speed compile operation. Although zero level is there, but we do nothing at the zero level. So no cost, no cost at the least zero level. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's skip zero. Now, this is the formula summation for the total cost. But this is summation already has less than or equal to the total cost, less than or equal to this summation. This summation. Now we need to estimate it. We need to estimate it. Yeah? Because the seeding function not very easy to manipulate if we use a simpler expression based on some inequality. That seeding function less than equal to the inner part, n over 2 h plus 1 plus that 1. Because the difference is less than 1. Less than or equal to less than 1, right? So we plus 1, so we get larger. We get larger. Okay? Yep. All right. So then, now we need to calculate this estimated summation. Two terms. Yeah. First term, second term. We do summation based on the first term, and then summation based on the second. So we have two summations. Two summations to estimate. Here, actually, we can hear the math computation here, not that easy. If you look at it, the math operation here, not that easy. Okay? But if we use that exact expression, then the math operation will be much easier. Okay? Yeah. I just I just noticed that. Yeah. Here, let me show you. If we use the original exact math formula, much easier. All right. If we use the original exact, the highest level, what's the highest level? Okay. Highest level, because we simply want to do from H1, right? Next level, and so on. Okay? But if you do this way, think about it. You have a lot of cancellation, okay? After cancellation, you have And with all, this function belongs to big theta of n. Actually, one half times n. One half times n. So easy. So easy. Right? And in this summation, you will see we will get, you know, big O. Here I use big O, big theta. Pretty much the same. The only cost is this much. Okay? Yeah. But the math, this side, actually pretty complicated. Yeah. Here, this one, actually pretty easy. H, yeah. oh, because H star from 1 to log n. So we use this formula. This formula log n squared. So that term. So we only need to estimate the first one. Okay? First one. This summation. This summation we can take 
and here we can treat as constant. H variable, and we can treat as constant, we fix it. So we'll treat N as the constant. Okay? Alright. Then we need to take this summation. That summation. Okay? Alright. That's the summation. S. How to calculate the summation? Not that easy. Here you will see. Not that easy. That summation. Okay? But remember, I still keep the you know estimate based on the original exact formula. That's quite easy, quite easy for your reference. But we can also do this harder way. This way is harder, the harder way. Because I want to show you how to, to calculate summation of this. Quite tricky. What? I want to show you the manipulation technique. Interesting technique. Let me use this space to do the calculation. S equals that. You can see. Denominator power of 2. Denominator power of 2. Numerator consecutive integers. 1, 2, 3, through n. Consecutive integers. So we want to take advantage of the structure. Take advantage of the structure. Here, the inside. The key of the manipulation multiplied by 2 both sides. 2x. Two 2x. Yes. Two yeah. 2x. Two then, because when you multiply both sides by 2, the denominator is still power of 2. You do not change the structure. For the denominator, but the term actually shift one position to the left, to the right, one position. Here, compare the corresponding terms. S summation to S summation, the, the corresponding terms, same denominator terms. Okay, see, all these terms, the numerator just the one difference, right? Denominator, the same. Numerator, one difference. Okay, yeah. all right. Subtraction. Take subtraction. Okay. Then summation one s equals one. Okay. Yeah. All right. The limit. We use the limit to calculate the limit of the summation. It's one. Okay. Yeah. All right. So well, now we can get to the building cost of the heat. What's the building cost? Two terms, the first term big O of n, second term big O of log n squared. And we know log n dominates. Sorry, a big O of n dominates big O of log n squared. So we can drop the minor term. Right? So we just take the major of n. So this tells us the building cost of a heap is big O of n. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. So we feel acceptable. Not bad. So we spend this much cost. Number of comparisons. Build that heap. So we get a max here. 
Next step, we will run heat soil. After we build the next heat, we are ready to run the heat soil. Preparation completes. So next we will see heat soil. Very simple and very smart. <coughs> very smart. I will use a simple diagram to show you the idea. How to run the heat soil. B.3, heat soil and efficiency analysis. First, we run the heat soil. Then, we estimate efficiency. Okay, yeah. so then we're done. We finish the heat soil. Okay, All right. Idea of the heat soil. Let me use a simple diagram to show you. How to run a heat soil. Key observation here. Let me use this simple diagram. Suppose we have built a max heat here. Okay? We spend that little of N to construct this max heat. In this mapping, got the largest element is at the root. <coughs> largest. Largest at the root. Okay. Inside the array, you know the location of the root, right? What is the location of the root? Of a max inside the array. <coughs> Index 1. Right? Index 1. Okay. Is it easy to grab it? To reach take that element, put it in place. Because we know that's the maximum. We can put it in place easily, right? Put it in place easily. So the first step, we know this is the maximum. We can put it in place immediately. What is its right position? In place, right position. If I use this line segment, represent the whole array. Okay. Right. The root location in the max heap, the first position, other than the zero. We exclude zero position in the X. Position at one, that's its current location, but its destination location is the end of the array, right? Destination location. Mm. That's in place. Location. Right position. In place. Can we do one swap operation to put it in place? One swap operation. Right? Yep. Just the one swap operation. Okay? Yep. Swap. A of 1 and A of N. One element in place. Okay? But now A of N is at the root. What would happen if A of N appears at the root? What would happen? Some violation, right? Some violation. Max heat property violation occurs at this point. Can we fix it? Can we fix it? We have max heat divide operation, and only one violation. Other than that location, everywhere else, no problem. Only that location, there is a violation. So we can fix it by running max heat divide operation all the way down to a lead. Right? Recover the heat structure by max EP5 process, sub process. Okay, yeah. All right. Now, procedure of heat. So here, actually, you already get a basic idea because we can do this. 
again and again. Right? All right. Here we use iteration. Not recursion, iteration. You know the reason, right? Replacing recursion by iteration. Because we want to don't want to use deep step. Okay? Avoid deep step. Avoid. To save memory resource. Okay. Yeah. All right. Build a max heap. Yeah. We know how to build. We can use iteration to build. Here, we assume we have the next heap already. Now, we run the heap sort. A full loop from n down to 2. Down to 2. Because 1, we need to do nothing, right? When you only have one node left, it's already in place. So, not a 1. n down to 2. We can complete the sort. Inside the for loop, each iteration we do swap a of i, a of one, the root one, and a of i. Remember, i then mark the end of the current heap. Current heap, we exclude those elements already in place. We exclude those elements in place. Okay. Yeah. We already put some elements in place. Don't touch them. Okay. Leave them there. Do not touch them. So the last one is this at position I. At the beginning, I is N, so we'll swap the first one with the last one, all right? So we max CP5, but next round, next round, all right? Don't touch the element already in place. So we reduce that end of the heap position by 1, okay? And minus 1 next time. And swap, max CP5, okay? Reduce the heap size by what? A dot heap underscore size minus minus reduce that control variable for the heap size by one. Okay? All right. And run the max EP5 operation at the root one. At the root one. But I hope you write the, this function max dash epify this function using iteration rate. Do not use recursion. Okay? Use iterator. Avoid recursion. Because we want to save. Alright? Yeah. Then you go to the next iteration until you put all elements in place. That's the heap sort. That's the heap sort. Pretty simple, right? Here you can see why the heap sort looks so simple here. This is the pseudocode enough. The pseudocode. Why it's so simple to run the heap sort? Then, the reason, go back to the title of this topic, because we use some of the advanced data structure here, max heap. If you do not have the max heap, you cannot run a heap sort in this symbol. So 
after this analysis, you can appreciate the power of advanced data structures. Power of advanced data structures. Okay? All right. Now, estimate the total cost for a heap sort. Heap sort. Remember, the building part, we need to add it. Building part of big O of N plus the remaining part. Plus the remaining part. Remaining parts, when you put the maximum in place, you need to run hippify operation. You need to spend this much cost. Okay? Then you reduce the heat size by one, so the next time you will run the max HP5 operation, you get a log of n minus one, and so on. Okay? Down to two, the last one you need to run max HP5 operation, this much cost. Adding up, what's the total cost? Can you estimate the total cost summation on the log number? Not easy, right? Summation on log functions. Log functions. Hard, right? We know log functions. Pretty hard. But there is some easy estimate here. Very easy estimate. Can you see each term less than or equal to log of n? Each term less than or equal to log of n? Sorry, log this two of n, including the last one less than or equal to log base two of two, also log less than or equal to log base two of n. Here you can see we do very generous estimate. Okay? Oh, very rough estimate. Not very accurate. Too generous. Okay? Let's do the first time, let's do a very generous, very rough estimate. What's the estimate? How many times? n minus 1 times, right? n minus 1 close to n times, right? One difference, not important. Close to n times. Then, the, the formula, big O of n log n. Big O of n log n. Is it what we need? Big O of n log n? Our goal, one of the goals, three three objectives. This matches one of the three objectives. The worst case should be big O of n log n. Here we do the worst case. Here we do the worst case. Now, why worst case? Because when we run that CP5 all the way down to the bottom, that's the worst case. Best case, after one swap, we're done. Okay. One spot or the not, yeah. but actually won't because we put a maximum. Yeah, um, yeah it's possible yeah. because after the maximum in place, the next one, it's possible one swap. It's good, no violation anymore, right? Yeah. So the best case would not need to all the way down to the bottom. So this is the worst case. Worst case. Worst case is big O of n log n. That's one of the three objectives. So we're satisfied. Okay? Even with this rough estimate, we're satisfied. But another question, another reasonable question. If we do better estimate, can we improve? The formula here, that means better than n log n, because if the estimate is too rough. 
It's too rough. If we can apply some very accurate estimation, can we do much better here? The answer is no. Not significantly better. You may improve this constant a little bit. Constant. Okay? Yeah. Reduce constant from one to one half. That's possible. But the main part is still the same. A log n part is the same. Here, I won't do that. There is a there is a method to do that. Using definite integral. Definite integral to do the execution. Integration. But definite. One. Infinity. Definitely. Yes. Here, infinity. Okay? We can do very accurate estimates. But, in the same category. Here, I, I won't, won't do that. Here. Okay? Yes. It will take about 20 minutes. So I won't go that far. Just let you know, even we do that, integral estimate, still, we can do in this situation. Okay, and again. All right. That's all we need to know about the heap sort. Okay. In place, three objectives. It's like this. This is one of the objectives, right? Three. In place, we try very hard. We use iteration to replace recursion to make it in place. In place, add another one. What's the third objective? Third one. Handle, manage dynamic data, right? Manage dynamic data efficiently. Here, yes, we can, because we have a near balanced binary tree. When we do insertion, deletion, we only need to do vehicle of log and operation. This means efficient. Okay? This means efficient. And this, this one, not efficient. Okay? So we can do it boundary search efficiency. This is a boundary search efficiency. This is the linear search efficiency, not accepted. Okay? Boundary search type efficiency, accepted. Okay? That's our third object. Okay? You can see. Heap sort, we need those three requirements. One, two, three. All right. That's about the heap sort part. All right. Yeah, hope, uh, you can follow. Not too hard for you. All right. Then we will move to the next part. Introduction to hash. I want to give you the general idea of this hashing. C.1, why using hash? So let me explain why we use hash. 
confession for you. Why it is so useful? Because we treat this as another important topic of advanced data structures. Hashable data structure. Here we're talking about another data structure we call hash table. Data structure. Okay. Let me explain this new data structure. Well, this introduction, I want to give you the, some good reason why we need this new searching app. Let me explain. First, Let's look at a search and act on because here we're, we're doing the search. Currently, we know linear search. That's big O of N or big theta of Binary search. Big data or long. So then another very special one. Very special. Average big data of one worst big data of n worst. So the average is really good, okay? better than the binary search. Worst, we can avoid. The worst theoretically it can occur, but you know, based on good design, data structure design, the percentage for the worst case to occur very small, very small. So we don't worry about. So we can enjoy the average case efficiency. Big data on one. Another thing regarding the importance of the hash. So I want to recall one problem we learned before. Name of the problem. Element uniqueness. Problem. You still remember the element uniqueness problem. Pretty simple. Given an array. Given an array with n elements. How to check if all the elements in that array are unique? Unique return true, not unique return false. In that question we, we did before, right? We did, we did it. We did it. Module one, we did it. Module one. Okay. After our polynomial evaluation problem, then element uniqueness problem. Okay. Yeah. Here, the reason I mention this again because at 
that time I met Nancy Lewis in passion. Passion technique to solve it. Because this question is real simple, but it is commonly used as a theme question. An interview question. Okay? In the view, you know there are many famous companies when they choose programmers with stronger problem solving skills. They give algorithm questions. That's quite common. Okay, the top tier. Okay, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, top tier companies. When, because they need to find programmers with stronger problem solving skills. Okay, how to get those programmers? They give questions. You need this kind of question. This is one. Of Element uniqueness problem. problem. How to solve it efficiently. Okay? Yeah. So that's the call. Method one. Okay. Method one. Do global comparisons. We will get big theta of n squared. Because you need to compare all the possible pairs. If one of the pairs are equal, how many different pairs? One half n times n minus one pairs. Right? So the worst case, this. If one of the Pairs, just many pairs, give you equal result. Then, not in any force. If all giving you unequal, it's true. Okay? Yeah. But the total cost, big theta of n squared. That's method one. Method two. First, do sorting, do sorting, then you need big theta of n of n, right? There are many algorithms you can choose. Here, for example, using merge sort. You can do no worse than this one. For example, merge sort. The worst case is that. Okay? The first step. Second, do local comparisons. Local or here, even special local or the JSON. The JSON conference. Because in that way, you need a big theta of N, that much cost. Okay? But the overall, overall, your algorithm, big theta of N of N. Okay? Better than the first one. Better than the first one, all right. But still, you have room to improve. You have room to improve. All right. Method three. Hash. Hashing, 
When you use the hash, you need to build a hash key, right? I will, in this topic, I will explain how to build a hash, right? Details you will see soon. Build a hash table. The build hash table, the cost is big theta of Big theta of n. Okay? Build a cost. But when you build a hash table, you can already solve this problem. During the building process, the problem can be solved. Why? 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 When you build a hash table at the same time, the problem can be solved. Why? Let me explain. When you build a hash table, right? So actually, you, every time you insert a new element into the hash table, okay? How do you do the insertion? You run a special function called a hash function. You plug it into the hash function. The hash function would return the location in the hash table. Okay? Yeah. The location in the hash table you should place this element there, okay? Yeah. But when you do that mapping, a collision could happen. A collision. When a collision. Collision. First, conclusion, not in me, right? Yeah, collision, two elements have the same value. That's the collision, right? Two elements mapping to the same, same location. Actually, not necessary. Not when a collision occurs, no necessary two elements have the same value. But if two elements happen to have the same value, there must be a color. Okay? There must be a color. Two elements with different values, collision could also happen, but you have some resolving algorithm to fix it. Okay? But if the two element has, you know, same value, then the collision occurs, you can do comparison, you can find it. Okay? So not, not. So here, let me add one word. Okay? Add one word to be more accurate. Possibly. Okay? Possibly. Not. That's the third method. Okay. The third method, best among the three, because the overall efficiency, big data on n. Big data okay. If you need to write a program, yeah, sometimes they ask you to write a program. It's better to use Java to to write a program because Java there is a there is a hash map class the existing class hash map class if you use hash map class you can construct this hash table data structure you don't need to stop you know from scratch because too complicated. Okay, too complicated. So you want to use available 
hashable data structure. So in Java, you have one. Okay? Ready. So given the array, so probably are given a sequence of integers. Okay? So they just you know, store integers one by one into this hash table. Before you store, do the search first. No. Because an integer you use as a hash key, you search it from the hash table. If it exists, that not a link. Already exists, not unique. So you are done. If not exists, then you insert it. Okay? Now, next one. Detection. Exists or not, it, it, if it exists, return false. Terminate function. If if does not exist, place put. Yeah, in Java we call it put. The method put into the hash hash map of put. Okay. Exists, we use get. Right. So more specifically, two method. Get method. To see if it exists. And there is a put method, a new error into the hash table. That's simple. Okay. You run the for loop. Okay. Go through all the elements in the array. One scan from beginning to end, you can detect it. That's a bit of the end. Okay. Big data of the hand. Because, you know, get put, get put. Yeah. So here, that's the interview question. Okay. Just let you know the level. Okay. How hard, how difficult. Then those top tier companies, that's just one of them. There are some other questions very challenging. Yeah. This is one of the relatively easy questions. Others, you know, very challenging. Like at Google, I remember there is one, one question. 25 horses. 25 horses. You know, you want to pick the fastest horse from 25 horses. You can, you can do races. Each race, you can only select five of the horses. Five. Okay. You do not have clock. Okay. There is no clock. If you have clock, then it's very easy, right? So each horse just run once, race once. You yeah. can clock it. But there is no clock. You can only compare by, you know, races among those horses. Okay. Beat. One horse beat another. You can only do that. Then you need to find, you know, top three, top three horses. That's one of the you know, interview questions. Just let you know, you know, some of the interview questions, interesting interview questions. Because we live through this class, so I'd like to give you a few examples. We only have five questions, five minutes. How to find data item with a given key? Here, you know, the main part I like to leave to next time, right? Because I don't want to stop in the middle in my start. Okay? It's a complete start. Given a collection of data items, yeah, that's okay. well, what do we want to do next? Given a collection of data dynamic data, each data item is identified with a unique key, the property of the data. So there is a key part, 
and then there is a data part. You know? okay? That's different. Key is used for search operation. You want to do the search. Then the data, then do your business. The data part, that's the business part. Okay? Key value. Here, the structure. Key value thing. The structure is the commonly used data structure. We call it a key value tables. This data structure very popular in business. Very, very popular in business. Key value table. Searchable. Your data is searchable by their keys. Question, how to make your data search efficiently? Efficiently. Yeah. Efficiently, we want to have better than big data of long end, right? Usually, our goal better than long end. It could be better, but not worse. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that question we need to solve. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here you have freedom to choose the data structure yeah. because nobody specifies the data structure for you. You have freedom to choose the own data structure. Okay. So you want to choose the best data structure to help you solve this problem. When you have freedom, you can do a lot of things. Here, data structure design. That's the first step you need to do. Okay? But how to design that data structure? Let's talk about it next time. Okay? Next time, I'll give you the whole story. How to design a hashtag. Generalizing. Okay, all right.